Welcome back to Close Up. A break is coming for utility bills, but only in 10 cities and towns in New Hampshire. Enfield, Exeter, Hanover, Harrisville, Lebanon, Nashua, Peterborough, Plainfield, Rye, and Walpole will be the first to reap the benefits of what's called community power. The new Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire lets those municipalities purchase wholesale electric power for residents at a lower cost. They recently announced they expect to deliver 67,000 customers $5.8 million in savings in just the first three months of the program. Here this morning to explain is no stranger to this program from some years back, former State Senator Clifton Below, who is the leader of the Community Power Program now, the uh, chairman. Thanks so much for joining board. us. Yes. Good. All right. Good morning. So this concept seems straightforward. You know, towns and cities banding together to collectively, you know, increase their purchasing power to get a lower rate for energy. The towns uh, that we listed there, it's going to be a 22% savings relative to Eversource, 28% savings relative to Liberty Utilities, 39% savings relative to Unitel. Why is it so much lower? If I'm a rate payer, I'm almost <laughs> saying this is too good to be true. Um, well, what's happened is the utilities bought at the peak of the market last December and prices have come down since. So that's the main reason we're able to produce savings. But also we're structured uh, to be able to uh, produce savings over time. We expect to be able to uh, have a basic rate that beats the default service rate, the utility supply rate. Um, going forward in the future. Yeah, as you know, this is kind of a complicated thing. <laughs> it is. Some of the output here is going to be interesting. There's a real emphasis on renewables here yes. in terms of the projects that can be, uh, you know, come out of this, the money that's generated. So what is it in the pipeline in terms of projects that community power can generate? Well, um, the coalition is interested in, or, or what we're designed for, is to manage a portfolio of supply resources, which is a different approach, sort of like what the New Hampshire Co-op does, which is consistently produced lower supply rates than for the investor-owned utilities. And part of that, having a portfolio, is the ability to do projects locally um, and, and have contracts with uh, renewable projects that can help stabilize the price of electricity going forward. And if I'm a uh, ratepayer, I can actually choose how much I, renewable energy I would like to be paying for? How does that work? Yes, we, we have um, from the basic product, which is the lowest cost, uh, which meets the state's uh, minimum renewable portfolio standard, to options that go up to 100% renewable power. Uh, they cost a bit more uh, now, but are all still lower than the utility defaults or the utility supply rates. <laughs> and we heard in, in Nashua and Lebanon, they, they have these projects they want to join. So the dam is going to get a little bit of work. Maybe Maybe there's going to be a big solar project. Is the goal eventually to see more sort of local generation that builds onto this? Yes. I think we have a big opportunity in New Hampshire for projects, um, particularly in the one to five megawatt range, because that hasn't been available for net metering. Um, and, and there's just uh, our analysis, technical analysis, indicates there's a lot of potential for uh, additional savings that'll help stabilize the price. And this has been the experience in California where community power has really taken root. About half the state is served by it and they are developing thousands and thousands of megawatts of new renewable and storage resources and, and helping in the process save customers money. Hmm. You mentioned California, Pacific Gas and Electric wasn't exactly the biggest fan of the aggregation model when it came out. What's the relationship gonna be like with the investor owned utilities here in New Hampshire? It looks like you're gonna be a competitor. Um, well, yes. Um, it, in a sense, although the utilities are it's just a pass through their supply, they just put the load out to bid periodically and um, use that market product. Uh, there are competitive supply. Customers have had a choice for a quarter of a century of their supply. Mostly that's benefited large commercial and industrial customers. Over 90% of them take competitive supply because they get better deals. We're aggregating or pooling um, our local small customers, residential and small business, to have that buying power to produce similar kinds of savings um, for customers. We talk about this in terms of towns and cities, but you were saying when we talked about this uh, and when we did the story earlier, that there's no risk to the taxpayers. How does right. that work? Right. Well, um, by law and by design, um, this is set up so that the coalition is a nonprofit uh, corporation that operates as what's called a governmental instrumentality, meaning under state law, we're exercising authorities granted by the legislature to municipalities to operate uh, community power programs, either on an opt-in or an opt-out basis. And in structuring it that way, um, rate payer, not rate, taxpayers are not uh, exposed to any liability. The program has to be entirely funded by uh, 
our customer base. And so there's no recourse to the local municipalities for any cost. So if things go wrong, who does end up holding the Well, we, the if things go really wrong, we'd go bankrupt. But what we've done is we've spent three or four years developing this model and learning best practices from across the country. And we have um, engaged uh, professional vendors who have helped uh, the California market, for instance, be very successful um, and manage risk. That's part of what we're designed to do is to actively manage the risk of power supply. Who's next in the community power pipeline here in New Hampshire as you grow? Um, well, we, we now have uh, about 33 members total. We've grown from 14 at start. Um, and uh, uh, the cities of Portsmouth and Dover and town of Canterbury may also be launching uh, a little later this spring and, and later May and June. And then we have another a couple of dozen communities that will be looking at launching over the next year or so. And uh, within, within a couple of years, we could be uh, the second or even the largest single supplier of electricity in New Hampshire. Now, if a town or city leader is watching this and says, how do I, how do I get involved? How does a municipality sign up? Well, um, well, the easiest to learn about it, they can go to our website, communitypowernh.gov and learn about the Community Power Coalition. Um, it does take a vote of the governing body to enter um, into the what's called a Joint Powers Agreement. And then um, to implement a program, there has to be a majority vote of the legislative body to approve an electric aggregation plan that explains how it's all going to be done. It's all sort of under uh, statute and PUC rules, the process that we follow uh, to do this. Mm -hmm. And we, we would the coalition is designed to help communities so they don't have to staff up. I mean, part of the idea is that we provide the expert resources uh, to enable communities to do this. Um, but at the same time, we are governed by those communities for communities. Um, that, so there's local control and local accountability because the governing bodies appoint the representatives to our board of directors. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of people, they wonder, you know, okay, I'm going to switch to here. I have a new provider. Or somebody new is sending me the bill. What happens if there's a big ice storm and power goes out? That, that's not you guys anymore? That's, that's not us. Yeah, that's we're, we're responsible for the generators that put the power into the grid that match what we take out or customers take out. Um, the electric distribution utilities will continue to maintain the poles and wires. We want to collaborate and work with the utilities to advance grid modernization, to accelerate the transition to a more environmentally and economically sustainable future. Um, customers have seen tremendous rate shock over the last year, and we want to help um, avoid and mitigate future rate shocks and help, um, really help uh, through our local control engaging communities in our uh, taking control of our energy future in New Hampshire. Right, and this seems like a very New Hampshire concept, yes. right? That it's going to be small and local right. and, and locally accountable. And, and so, customers can always switch to back to utility supply or competitive supplier if that's a better deal for them without any cost or penalty. So it's sort of a win-win situation. This has been your issue for decades. Yes. <laughs> Where do you want to see this community power in the next 10 years? What do you think it's going to look like in particular with the electricity markets? Um, well, I, I think it'll be um, a, a force to be reckoned with. I think um, we hope within a few years to be able to be developing many more projects at scale using the power of competitive markets to source power competitively, to select projects that are the most economic and, and efficient, and to really enable customers in an automated way uh, to engage in demand response programs that help lower the cost of power, such as charging electric vehicles when costs are lowest on the system. All right, Clifton Below, thanks so much for taking a complex uh, <laughs> issue and making it accessible to the people. We appreciate your time. Thank you.